Peg is one of my personal favorite Steely Dan tunes to play, mostly thanks to its super expensive chord progressions. Today on Weekend Wake Shop, we're going to be taking a look at the four main finger style chord progressions used in that song. Check them out. What's up kids? Welcome to this week's installment of Weekend Wang Shop. Here's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Peg by Steely Dan is a super fun tune to play. It's in the neighborhood of G and it's all going to be played finger style and it'll hopefully introduce you guys to some really cool new chord shapes and chord voicings to use in your own playing. Basically all the chords in this are played with little four note grips so this will show you guys too how you can take some of those really big expensive jazz chords like 11 chords and 13s and stuff like that. Toss out some of the more superfluous notes and just play the really colorful ones to make them fit on the guitar. So it's oftentimes for some of those chords, like those 13 chords and stuff like that, we literally can't play all those notes on the guitar. So this will show you how you can get the most important notes out of some of those big jazz chords. I'm going to be putting up simple notation for some of the chord grips on screen, but for a full tab you can visit my Instagram page over at Ben Eller Guitars. Find the tab for this week's lesson, learn how to play it, then upload a video of yourself shredding through it, along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. First things first, let's cover the intro of the song. Okay, so the intro here just basically has two different chord grips that walk down the neck chromatically. It's pretty simple to play. This first chord shape we're going to use here is a G major 9 chord. Here's how you're going to play it. You got your root note on the 10th fret A string with your middle finger. Your first finger is going to be on the 9th fret D string, that's your third of the chord. With your little finger, put that on the 11th fret G, that's your F sharp note, which would be your 7th. So that right there is like G major 7 pretty much. And then with your ring finger, grab the 10th fret on the B. So your grip is kind of like 10, 9, 11, 10. And again, this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about distilling down some of those bigger chord shapes. Typically a G major 9 would have root 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th in it. Um, but in this chord shape here, there's no 5th in it. The 5th is kind of a pretty unimportant note in most chords. So we toss that guy out so we can make a really handy voicing right here. This next chord grip is going to be really familiar to you guys who have picked up a Hendrix tune or two because a lot of people call this specific grip the Jimi Hendrix chord. It's a dominant 7 sharp 9 chord. So here's how you're going to play it. You're going to have your 9th fret A string with your middle finger. You're going to have your 8th fret D string with your first finger. With your ring finger here, grab the 9th on the G string. So right there is F sharp 7, root 3rd, flat 7. And then with your little finger, you're going to grab that 10th fret B string. That's your sharp 9 interval right there. So again, 9, 8, 9, 10. Making these chord shapes transition easy is actually really simple if you just look at one little thing. So here's our first grip here, right? That G major 9 chord. You notice how the little finger is above the ring finger? And then when we go to the next chord shape, the F sharp 7, sharp 9, the ring finger is above the little finger. One way you could think of this is just to take that first grip that you're holding down, right? Move it down a half step, and then make your third and fourth fingers flip-flop. You see that? I went from this to this. That's really all you got to do. So you got your first uh, chord grip there. Then just move down a half step and flip-flop those fingers. Pretty simple. The next section here is the exact same stuff. It's just moved down a whole step from where you began. So you're going to have... F major 9 here. 8, 7, 9, 8. 
And again, just like before that, it's root, third, seventh, ninth. And then following this, you're going to have the Hendrix chord, E7 sharp 9. So again, that's 7, 6, 7, 8. And again, that just continues that same thing I was talking about a second ago, about flip-flopping those fingers, right? Watch it play through the first four chords and really watch these two fingers. Move down a half step, flip-flop. Move down a half step, flip-flop. Move down a half step, flip-flop again. The next part, you could probably take a guess what's going to happen. You're going to move down a half step and flip flop. So now you're on an E flat major 9 chord. Uh, numbers wise here, that's going to be 6, 5, 7, 6. E flat major 9. And then you're going to have a D7 sharp 9 chord, which again just involves scooting down and flip flopping the top fingers here. That lands you in 5, 4, 5, 6 into that position right there. For all of those chords, I'm using my thumb for the bass note and my next three fingers to grab the next strings on the guitar right there. Put it all together, and again, all you're gonna see here is those top fingers moving across the neck like that. So you start off with your G major, nine, F sharp seven, sharp nine, F major nine, E seven sharp nine, E flat major nine, D7 sharp 9. And that's your intro. After that intro, it grooves on the first couple of chords of the verse progression. So it kind of grooves on those for a little while, and then the verse starts in earnest after that. It uses these two chords here. Okay, this first chord here is a C major 7 chord. And what I'm doing here is I've got my first finger on the third fret A and on the third fret high E. So a little bar like that, right? And then what I'm gonna do here is with my middle finger, I'm gonna grab the fourth fret G string. That's your seventh degree. And then with my uh, third finger here, I'm gonna grab the fifth fret on the B string. That's my third. So notice there's no note on the D string in this chord. We're skipping the D string. We're not using it. We're only using A and the top three strings of the guitar. So yeah, three, skip, four, five, three. You're gonna pop that chord two times, and then you move into this shape right here. Now, here's what I've got going on, then I'll explain the chord. I've got my second fret A. I've got nothing on the D string again. That's just muted. I'm not you know, plucking it so you don't hear it. I've got the second fret G string, also with my first finger. And then I've got the third fret B string with my third finger. Then I've got the third fret high E string with my fourth finger. Just like that right there. Now I see some people refer to this chord as being B minor 7 with a sharp 5. So in other words, if you had like a B minor 7 grip and you raised up the fifth, it'd sound like that. I don't really agree with that kind of diagnosis of this chord because if you listen in the harmony, the bass right there is playing G. So even though us guitar players, we see this chord shape and when we're playing it by ourselves, we might think of B as being the bass note because that's what we're playing, right? But again, underneath you, you've got the bass player playing this G. See, if you're looking at that chord as a B-based chord, then yeah, it's B minor seven with that sharp five up top. But if you look at all those notes, in reference to how they're functioning under this G bass note, what you end up with is a sound that sounds like a, like a G major with an added ninth. Root, third, ninth, fifth, root. Like that. So I guess if you wanna get really fancy schmancy about it, it's a B over G major add nine. And you just pluck that guy one time. So you get your C major seven two times. B over G major, add nine, one time. So in the verses, you're gonna play that first progression there four times. Meow, 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 meow. Before you move the entire thing up here to starting off on the eighth fret. So it's the exact same chord grips you were using, they're just higher up the neck. You're going to have the 8th fret A string, the 9th fret G string, the 10th fret B string, 
and the 8th fret high E string under your bar. Again, same grip as your C major 7. So now this is an F major 7. And then you're going to move that down a fret here to being 7 on the A, 7 on the G, 8 on the B, 8 on the high E. Again, sometimes I see this called E minor 7 sharp 5, but this is happening under a C bass note. So the sound of the entire sum total of notes is like C major at 9. So you're going to play those two grips there two times in a row. Before you move back down the neck to the original position of C major 7 and G major add 9 two times. And then you have your turnaround section, which is going to feature those same two chord grips, just this time jacked all the way up to the 10th fret. So I'm going to have 10th A, 11th G, 12th B, 10th high E, this is G major 7. And then scooch down a fret and you're going to play 9th A, 9th G, 10th B, 10th high E. Again, under a D note, this spells out D major add 9. So you're going to play... And then go back to your F major 7 and C major add 9 stuff we played a second ago. And then back again to the original position of the 3rd fret, C major 7, G major add 9 chords, which you play twice. So all together your verse should sound like this. So the chorus here actually kicks off with the same two chords as the verse. Your C major 7 and your B over G major add 9. So exact same two chord shapes and stuff. Pluck the first one twice, pluck the second one once. And then they change it up to this right here. Now these two chords, there's a lot of different things you could name them. Um, I'll tell you how most people kind of look at them, but there's a lot of options here. But basically all I'm playing here is the open A. 5th D with my ring finger, the 5th G with my little finger, and the 3rd fret B string with my first finger. Like that right there, it's a really nice sound. Most people call this A minor 11, with the intervals being root, flat 7, flat 3rd, and 11th. This kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, like a real A minor 11 chord would have, you know, root 3rd, 5th, flat 7th. It have a ninth and it have an eleventh. That's a whole lot of notes in there that are just really difficult to squeeze into a, a comfortable voicing on the guitar. So in this case, we kind of tossed out some of the ones that you know maybe some of the other players are already playing, or just some of the most you know I'd say the least important ones like the fifth and stuff like that. Next, what you're gonna do is play this grip. Now you can see what I did here is I took that exact same shape I held had held down right five five three on D G B. I'm just going to move that up a whole step. So I've got my 7th D, 7th G, and 5th B. I'm going to play those with an E bass note. So again, the first one had an A bass note. This next one has an E bass note. Most people call this E minor 11. So again, root, 11th, flat 7th, and root. So in that case, we've distilled down, you know, like a 5 or 6 note chord into just basically being 3 notes. 11th, flat 7th, and root. It's kind of the bare bones needed for the harmony right there. I saw an interview with Donald Fagan of Steely Dan where he was saying that basically what he was sort of thinking of when he played that is that first one is kind of a 4-1 in G major, right? The 4 chord to the 1 chord. G major's relative minor is E minor. So with him playing A minor 11 and E minor 11, it was kind of like a 4-1 in E minor. So it's kind of like you got a 4-1 in the major, and a 4-1 in the minor. Cool stuff. Do that two times. This next thing you're going to play right here is pretty cool. It's a C-sharp over A, so you can say it's like a first inversion A chord. Basically your grip is going to look like this. You're going to have the 9th fret E string, nothing on the A. Your D string is going to be on fret number 11 with your 3rd finger, it's octaves. You're going to have that ninth G under your bar. And then with your middle finger, grab that 10th fret on the B string. 
Now, a lot of players like to look at this chord as kind of like feeling like you grabbed an F sharp minor seven, real kind of typical bar chord shape, only you just reached up and grabbed the bass note on the low E string here. Some players also like to look at this as part of a C shaped A chord, whatever floats your boat. So you're gonna pluck that chord two times and then move down here to C. This is kind of based off the typical, you know, E-shaped C bar chord, but you don't really have to hold down all those notes as you're not gonna be playing all of them anyway. So for me, coming from that last grip, what I like to do is I'm just gonna move my first finger down a fret, and with my uh, third finger here, that's gonna stay on the D string, in this case, fret 10. My middle finger is gonna be on the ninth G, and then my B string is under my bar. So again, a simple trick you could look at here is your A major grip was like this, right? Just scooch down a fret and move your middle finger up a string. And that's a good way to kind of look at doing that chord uh, movement right there. So these next two chords here are G major. This is again a C shaped G major chord. What you're gonna have here is your fourth finger on the 10th A, ninth fret D string here with your third finger, seventh fret G string with your first finger, and then with your middle finger here, grab the eighth fret B. That's just root third, fifth root, stock, you know, G major chord. Pluck it two times before you move on to F sharp seven. This is a grip that I like to use a lot of the times too here. I'm gonna grab the ninth A, my third finger, the uh, eighth D with my middle finger. My little finger here is gonna be on the ninth G. And then my first finger is gonna be on the seventh B string. That's a voicing I use a lot, F sharp seven. So you got G major, F sharp seven. This is followed by this. So this is B minor seven. All that you're gonna have here is your seventh low E, nothing on the A string. We're gonna have seventh D, which I just have under my bar, seventh G, which I have under my bar, and seventh B, which I have under my bar too. So it's just everything on the same fret. Just be sure to skip the A string. You don't want that guy in there. You could also finger it like this if you wanted to with your first finger and then your little three finger stack. But I usually just do first finger. After this, E7 sharp nine, the Jimi Hendrix chord that we used in the intro, right? Seventh fret A string, sixth fret D string, seventh fret G string, and eighth fret B string. So that's B minor seven. E7 sharp 9. And then after this we got two more chords that we're going to add in here. A minor 7. It's just like that B minor 7 grip you did a second ago. It's just moved down two frets here to the 5th fret to an A. So again this is 5th E, 5th D, 5th G, 5th B. Skipping the A string again. Play it two times before you move on to this chord. This is like a D7 sus 4. I kind of hear it as D11 personally, but you can look at it any number of ways. You're going to have your 5th fret A string, your 7th fret D string, your 5th fret G string, and then with your little finger here, grab the 8th fret B string. Alright, that chorus has a lot of stuff in it, so let's be sure to take a look at those again. Here we got our C major 7 and B over G add 9, just like our verse chords followed by our A minor 11, E minor 11. Then you do that same stuff again. Gonna go up to the ninth fret here for that bar chord voicing for our C sharp over A, followed by the C. And again, remember the trick there is just move that middle finger up a string. That's the only difference there. Move the middle finger up, move the whole chord shape down a fret. Our G major to F sharp seven. B minor to the Hendrix chord, E7 sharp 9. Then lastly, your A minor 7 to D7 sus 4. Then you're back to those verse chords. Now from there, the only other chord progression in the tune is the turnaround, which they use after the chorus to get you back to the intro progression. It sounds like this. It's just five chords. First one here is F sharp minor seven. This is this one finger grip that we've been doing a couple times in the chorus here. Just move down here to the second fret. So I'm gonna have my second fret low E, nothing on the A, so don't play it. 
second D, second G, and second B. Just all four of those notes play together. Then move that whole grip up here to the seventh fret. This is gonna be B minor seven. Seventh E, seventh D, seventh G, seventh B. Then you're gonna go into this kind of common E minor seven voicing. This is my seventh A, ninth D, seventh G under my bar, and then my eighth fret B string. Seven, nine, seven, eight on the middle four strings. Then you're gonna go back to your B minor seven voicing. So just your one finger across the seventh fret, playing the E, D, G, and B strings. And then the last chord they play here is this C major seven groove. Now, what I'm gonna have is my first finger on my eighth low E. With my third finger and my fourth finger, I'm gonna stack them up on the ninth fret on the D and G string. So again, we got this skipped string in here. It's a theme you've seen through this whole song here. So eighth low E, ninth D, ninth G, and then with your middle finger, which is free right now, right? Reach in and grab that eighth fret on the B string. So your whole grip is like eight, nothing, nine, nine, eight, nothing. Just like that. And that's all the chord progressions in the tune, which is Kind of a lot of stuff. So let's go through them all again right here, all in order to make sure you got them all down. We'll start off with the intro, which is kind of creeping down the neck, swapping out those third and fourth fingers on the grips. And we'll go a little slower than record tempo. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Just keep creeping it down. parts remember we got our two chord groups that we played through four times here one Everything you need to know about a Steely Dan classic tune. Really fun to play that one. I suggest adding that into your cover band repertoire to impress your girlfriend's dad or something like that. Be sure to leave me a comment letting me know if there's some other Steely Dan tunes that you'd like to see covered. Uh, I really like playing Josie and Hey 19 and all that, that kind of stuff. So all those are really fun. And if you guys are interested, I will cover those on Weekend Wank Shop in a future episode. So be sure to leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you want to see featured on the channel next. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. You guys can follow me on Instagram over at Ben Eller Guitars. And if you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for another sick lick next week. Remember what Carl Verhagen said. If you like it, learn it. Cheers.